Hey coders and welcome to another JavaScript for complete beginners tutorial video and on this video we're going to be dealing with functions. So let's start off with an abstract view of what a function is. So I'm going to draw a circle here which kind of represents an arbitrary piece of code which could be used to run additional pieces of code. So our function could have multiple statements or lines in it, for loops, if statements, etc. inside of it. But the key takeaway is that a function takes some set of input and then finally it will return an output. So the input is also called the parameters of the function, which can be one to infinity number of things that you pass in. And the output is typically called the return value. I'm sure it has other names, but that's what I'm going to be referring to it in this tutorial video. So now that we have the abstract understanding of a function, let's go ahead and use a more um, concrete example. So let's go ahead and write an add function. So this add function is going to take two parameters. The first one is just some arbitrary input, which we'll call input1. And then the second input we'll call input2. And then finally there will be an output. So what our add function is going to do is it's going to add input1 to input2 and then return it on the output. So as denoted input1 plus input2, that's just basic math. And of course, when it's done executing, we want it to kind of go back as output to be used by the original caller of the function. So to see this work in practice, let's go ahead and assign real values to these inputs. So for input 1, let's go ahead and assign it the value 2. And then for input 2, let's assign it the value 3. So if we were to pass those inputs into our add function, we can assume and just erase input 1 or replace it with the real values until we get 2 plus 3. And then finally, that value, when computed, will be returned on the output. So again, let's do a more concrete example by rewriting this abstract add function to something that would resemble in JavaScript. So the keyword that you use is in JavaScript would be function, followed by the name of the function, which is add, followed by parentheses and a list of the parameters we're going to allow as inputs, followed by a curly bracket, ending with a curly bracket, and then somewhere in the middle we can do our code. So I'll go ahead and extend the 2 and the 3 to their corresponding input values. And then inside the function, we can just go ahead and return a plus b, which is exactly what it was before in our abstract view. And hopefully by this point, it should kind of make sense because we learned about variables. So 2 and 3 are getting set to a and b. We're using a and b, adding them together, and then returning them out of the function back to the output. So if you are lost at this point, then maybe take a break and let's reevaluate. But otherwise, let's move on. So another thing to note is that you can have as many input parameters as you want. So I can go ahead and write C and D here. And then somewhere outside of the code or in our abstract view, those inputs can be passed in and then later used in the function or used in the return statement. And in this example, we don't even use C and D, but we still pass them in to be used in the future, potentially. So like we said, a function can return some type of output, but how do you actually use or store the output that it returns? So in this example, we can do var x equals the add function and pass it two arbitrary values, such as 1 and 2. So if you remember the function, all it does is it adds them together and returns it. So at this point, x should be the value of 3. And again, if this doesn't make sense, then maybe rewatch the video or take a, take a step back and try to really think what's going on with how we declare functions and how they're used. So another important aspect of functions that we should show you is that a function can also invoke many other functions from within itself. So in this case, we can have function A, and function A can invoke function B, Function B can evoke function C, and then function C's output value will go to function B, and function B's output value will go to function A, which can then go further down the program to be used. 
and to demonstrate what we mean by further be used, any, at any point in the program we can call the same function multiple times to get a return value, which is demonstrated by these two abstract arrows that we're drawing to it. So hopefully this helps you get an abstract view of how functions work. Let's go ahead and go over to our editor to get more concrete examples of how they actually work and hopefully we can go back and view the abstract drawings if it helps us. Alright, so we have our editor open here. Let's go ahead and just start with writing a really basic add function like we showed in the whiteboard demonstration. So again, to start doing that in JavaScript, we need to start with the keyword function, followed by the name of the function, which we'll do add, followed by some parameters, which we'll do A and B, followed by curly braces, and then inside the function, we want to just go ahead and return A and B. And then down here, we can do var x is equal to add 1 and 2, like we also did in the example, and then print out the value of x. Go ahead and run this so we can see how it works. And we see here it prints out 3, as we saw in the example, right? Because what's happening is we first declare the function here, which doesn't actually do anything. It just kind of sets up a piece of memory that's ready to run this function down the road if needed. And then when we hit this line, line 7, we're going to go ahead and execute the function. We pass 1 into A. We pass 2 into B, which again will evaluate here to 1 plus 2, which evaluates to 3, which gets returned here to 3, and then prints out to 3. So go ahead and undo all of those overwrites. When I make changes to the values like that, that's mainly so you can understand how the program is kind of changing behind the scenes and how memory is changing and states changing. So at this point, if you are lost about how we declare the function, how we use the function after declare, how parameters are passed in, in this case these would be arguments, so how we pass arguments into the parameters list, or how we define and return values from the function, make sure you understand this because this is the most basic function that you could possibly do. I mean, there's, um, But make sure you really understand how this works. So play around with it yourself, convince yourself you know what you're doing, and then let's move on to some more um, difficult functions. <clears throat> and a little side note, console.log, now that we've been using it so much, this is basically a function, right? There's some type of log function which we pass a string or a value and what it does is behind the scenes, node will print it out to your console down here. So all this time you've been using functions, but you just really haven't known about them. But now we actually know how to define them and how to use them and how to pass arguments to them. Additionally, if we wanted to pass more arguments to console.log, we can do so. So if I were to go ahead and run this, we see how it prints out three, hi there, argument two. And that's just because the console log function has been declared in such a way that it takes an infinite amount of arguments and processes them. Okay, so let's go ahead and start using a couple of more functions just to kind of demonstrate that a function can evoke other functions down the road if needed. So go ahead and clear out of this and I'll say function get first name. I'm declaring get first name that requires no parameters. So I'll just go ahead and return first name. And then I'll also add another function called get last name, which returns a last name. And then a third function called get name, which we're going to have it return get first name and concatenate that with get last name. So then down here, if you were to say var name equals to get name, and then print out name. we can see that it concatenates my first name with my last name and then it prints it out into the console. So again, hopefully this is pretty straightforward if you're lost about how this works or you can go ahead and work through it. So we define three functions here. Once you define a function, any of the other functions can use it. That's why get first name can be used inside get name and also why get last name can be used inside get name. And then down here on line 15, we invoke get name, which comes here, which goes to this line, which then invokes get first name, which comes here and then returns Cody. So then Cody is put here, basically. 
And then we go here and invoke this function, which is get last name, which goes up to this line, the value cybert, which then will concatenate these together, which will make the value look like so, which is then returned here and then printed out down here. Go ahead and undo all that. So we can move on to the very next example. So for another function example, we're going to combine it with an if statement just to kind of make it a little bit more complicated. So we can say is odd takes a parameter of a and then return a mod 2 not equal to 1 or not equal to 0, right? So this is some type of um, mod math, which for the most part, if you divide a number by 2 and it has a remainder, then it's odd, right? So if it doesn't have a remainder, it would be 0, which would mean it's even. So therefore, we check if it's not equal to 0, it must be odd. We could do the same thing with function is even. And instead, we can say is odd a and then negate that. So to test it out, we can say var x is equal to is odd 2 is even 2 for y. Oops. And if we were to run this, we see that x of 2 is not odd, and then y prints out true because 2 is even. So another example we're going to do to make it more complicated is to combine functions with an if statement. So we can go ahead and write a function called print stars, which takes the parameter should print stars. And then in here we can say if should print stars is true, we can then print a bunch of stars. Otherwise, we could just print out some arbitrary things here, just to say pluses. And then down here, we can invoke it with print stars true, and then print stars false to see what actually happens when we run this function. You can see the first time it's going to print the stars out because we passed true in here, where this will be true, this will be true, that is true, so it prints stars. And then the second example, where we call the function false is passed in, where this is not true, and then we go ahead and print out the plus statements. So then the last example we're going to do with functions is I'm going to combine functions with um, a while loop, so you can kind of see that and get more practice with writing both of those. So we're going to go ahead and write a function called print lines, which takes number of lines as a parameter. And inside here, we can say number of lines is greater than or equal to zero. In fact, let's just do greater than zero. And then we can go ahead and decrement that here. And then go ahead and just print out a blank console.log. So here, if I were to say console.log start, console.log finish, and then inside the middle, I can say print lines, and I'll give it seven. If I were to run this, we see that it prints out seven lines. Now, if I were to go ahead and change this to a one, we see that it just prints out one line. That's because we are looping over x amount of times based on what we pass in as a parameter, and then we print out a blank string or a blank line for every single iteration of that loop. All right, so that's a basic overview of how to write functions and how they use them in JavaScript. Now, I will say one more time that if you felt like you don't understand what's going on, or you felt lost at all, I highly suggest to rewatch the video 
or to go find other references or resources and really make sure you understand functions because I think they're kind of the starting point of where programming gets really interesting and really fun, but it's also where it starts to get very complex. And if you don't have a good foundation on how to write functions or use them, and more specifically all those other things we learned in the other videos, you're just going to be lost from here on out. So I would highly suggest learn functions, learn variables, learn booleans, learn if statements, learn looping, and then if you do, and you feel like you have a good, solid foundation on those, then I think you're good to go. And now the next step is just kind of problem solving and learn how to solve problems. Um, again, thanks for watching. And if you have any feedback at all on my videos, feel free to leave me a comment. All right, thanks and have a good day.